In this tutorial, I want to talk about how you can back up and restore a Cisco Router's iOS, basically the Cisco Router's operating system. And you can both back it up because it exists in the router in flash memory as a file that is easy to basically back up to a computer. And you can back it up over the network. And uh, restoring a router, if by accident you delete your flash memory, you would wipe out your operating system on your router. So uh, many times in the lab, students have accidentally mistyped a command into the router and deleted the flash memory, and we've had to restore the operating system to the router in the lab. So I'm going to show you how you can do it. Uh, we can't do it completely in Packet Tracer, so, but in, over here on this model right here, I'm going to show you kind of how you would do it. And then over here, this is a, um, with these computers here, this is basically imitating what I have set up physically on my laptop right now. And I'm going to go over the process. So we're going to do this on an actual router, and I'm also going to talk about it in Packet Tracer. Okay, so how to do this? Well, you can see over here, let's start over here. I've got a router. I've also got a console connection from my PC to my router. And then on my Ethernet interface, right, I've got an Ethernet connection to a switch and the router's connected to the switch. And then I have a server over here and the server is running an FTP server and a TFTP server, right? And we can open that up right now. Let's open up that server, take a quick peek at that. If you go to config, and you see TFTP, you can see the service is on. You can see it has a bunch of um, images, um, router uh, images inside of it, ready to go. It also has, let's see here, an FTP server, which you could use too to transfer the files. And the FTP server is also on, and it has a default username and password of Cisco as username and password is Cisco. And you can see that it has uh, some uh, operating systems here, Cisco IOS images in its uh, in its directory where it's storing its FTP files as well. So it's ready to go for transferring files, and it's a nice tool that we have here in Cisco Packet Tracer. So we've got a TFTP server and an FTP server here. We've also got on this client right here the ability to console into the router. So this PC right here is consoled into the router and you can see if we go to config or no desktop you've got terminal here you click on terminal and it's all the settings are set for a hyper terminal connection that will connect directly to your router on a console port right and a console port is a special administrative port on the router right so you click here hit enter and now I'm consoled into the router now where is that port on the router well if you hit physical right and we look at the router let's see here we click on the router and we look at physical here zoom in, you can see that this port is the console port right here. It has an RJ45 connection, so you plug it in. It looks like an Ethernet port, except it's blue right up here. It says console, right, on the router. So this is kind of an image of what the router would look like from the side, right? So there's the console port. And then on the PC, you're going to connect over it with a, um, and if we hover over here, you'll see it, uh, an RS-232 port. Let's see if we can see that. So we go here and we look at the PC and we zoom in and I don't know if we can see our serial port here but this PC in fact does have a serial port because we are connected to it. Now on my computer I have a actually a 1700 router which I've turned on and I've given it the IP address uh, 192.168.5.1 and I have a console connection actually from my laptop and I'm at 192.168.5.100 and so I have a console port serial port on my laptop so it was nice I could just I could just connect right to the console port on the router which is nice and I've also put a crossover cable from my laptop into the Ethernet port on the router so I'm connected to the router in two ways one by Ethernet and the other one by console connection right now to um, do this in, in reality from my PC to the router, right, in actuality, um, I need to have a TFTP server and for that I went to SolarWinds and downloaded the free SolarWinds TFTP server. And then you're also going to need a terminal client like HyperTerminal. Now, HyperTerminal was um, installed by default and available in Windows XP, but on Windows 7, it doesn't seem to be installed by default. So I recommend, although you can actually find old versions of HyperTerminal and get them working in Windows 7, it's a bit of a hassle. So I recommend using um, 
TerraTerm. I'm using TerraTerm Pro Web version 3.1 and it can be a terminal client or an SSH client or Telnet client and you're going to need to want to download these and then install them on your computer if you plan on consoling into the router or if you plan on running a TFTP server to back up the, um, the operating system, the iOS, from the router to the PC. And let's go look at those websites where you can find those. The websites iera.com forward slash TerraTerm and here you can download TerraTerm Pro uh, I'm using the web version 3.1.3 if you go here to SolarWinds if you just look up SolarWinds TFTP or you go to their website and click on download free trials and free tools let's see here and then you scroll down to the free tools section right here you can see that we should see a TFTP server here somewhere let's see here so and there is the TFTP server so I recommend both of these products and they're free to download so we've got both of those set up on my PC right here I'm running Windows 7 PC let's see if we can console into the router using TerraTerm Pro web so I'm gonna minimize this here's my desktop you can see that I've already launched the SolarWinds TFTP server right here. The service is stopped, but I'll start it up in a minute. And then TerraTerm Pro, I'll just open up the folder here and fire up the program. And right away when you fire up the program, you get a message that looks like this. And we're not going to connect TCP IP with Telnet SSH or other. What we're going to connect with is serial port, COM1. Click OK and bring this window over and then hit enter and you can see R2 there's the router right there right and we can do a quick show flash and if we do a slow show flash you can see that in the flash memory here is the name of our iOS of the operating system for the router uh, you can see it's a it's an old router older router Cisco router 1700 router so what I might do is just copy that let's see if we can um, back this up right now to our TFTP server so I'm gonna go to the TFTP server here right and I'm gonna start it up so we just go to file configure and then start notice that the TFTP server root directory is in the C drive I think I have that here let's take a look at it and you can see that there's nothing in it right now so there's nothing in the root directory for the TFTP server but hopefully we'll be able to copy some files in here alright another thing we can do is we can try to make sure that we can talk to our computer so I can ping 192.168.5.100 and I can get a message now right now I am 5.100 so I had to on my computer I set my computer up and configured it specially for this scenario. In other words, I went to the control panel, I went to the network and sharing center, change adapter settings, local area connection, and I set my IP address here to 5.100 and 5.1. So I actually did set up the IP addressing scheme that I showed in Packet Tracer. So the router's at 5.1 and I'm at 5.100. And so let's see if we can copy our file over there. So I want to copy this first of all. I'm going to highlight that, Control C, and then I'm going to say copy flash TFTP for the server. Copy flash to the TFTP server, hit enter, and it says invalid input. Okay, well why is that? Well, we're in user mode, not privilege mode. So let's type enable. Now we're in privilege mode. And now let's try it. Copy flash TFTP and source file name. This is where I want to paste that file name. So I'll hit I'll hit uh, paste. Nope. How about right click? There it goes. I'll hit enter. And then the address or name of the remote host 192.168.5.100 and hit enter destination file name the same I'll just hit enter to accept the default and there it goes so I'm copying the iOS the operating system from the router now to my laptop 
Okay, that's good. So now let's see if that worked. We'll open up the folder and TFTP root, and there's the file. Okay, so you can see it's uh, 4,000 kilobytes, so it's basically 4 megs. It's not very big. And there it is, so it worked. So we have the iOS image right here. So now, if we wanted to, we could work at how do you restore a router that's lost its, um, that's basically lost its iOS. So in other words, here I am in privilege mode right here, and if I said delete flash, and it says delete file name flash, confirm, that's not right. How about, could we do an erase? Uh, delete a file. Let's try to do this whole thing again. Um, delete flash and then f delete the file name. I'll just right click here and we'll hit enter and it says delete the flash. So this is our operating system right here we're deleting. So we'll hit confirm, hit enter. It's confirmed. So now what we'll do is we'll reload the router save configuration has been modified yes all right we're gonna reload we'll hit enter to reload and there's the reload we're restarting the router you can see here bad file magic number boot cannot load flash hit enter bootstrap cannot load flash it's not working now what if we turn the router off and then turn the router on. You can see that the router starts to bootstrap, right? It starts to post, it wants to post, and there's no operating system. So after it bootstraps off the boot ROM, it's got the memory, it gives you a quick detail, it doesn't actually have an operating system, so our router is no operating system, so we're left here, and that's it. So now what do we do? Okay, eventually, after turning the router off and on, and having it try to boot up an iOS, right? It has not been able to find an iOS, and you can see that we've been presented what's called uh, ROM monitor mode, right? So we have a ROM on one um, prompt here, and we're in ROM monitor mode, which is a subset, a small iOS in on ROM memory that will allow us to recover the router and basically recover our operating system. We should be able to recover the iOS image from our computer to the router over the console connection. So in other words, we can do it over this console connection using X modem and then sending the uh, file across the um, console port. Let's give it a try. So we're in here right now and we want to do this so we'll say X modem we can put a question mark afterwards see what it says it says do not start sending program yet file size okay do you wish to continue no what we're gonna say is we're gonna say X modem dash C and then we'll put the name of the file in here and there it is and we'll hit enter do not set start sending the file yet We'll say yes. All right, ready to receive file. So now, once we've hit yes and we've hit ready to receive file, what we need to do is go into TerraTerm here, and we're going to go to File, Send File, and Transfer. No, we'll do Transfer X Modem. We'll do this over here. File, Transfer X Modem, Send and now we have to direct it to the file that we want to send. So on the C drive, we go down to TFTP root, go in here, and this is the file that we want to send, and we click open. All right, and there goes the file. So now the file is being transferred across, and it's going to take a little time. As you can see, it's not going very fast. It's a very slow connection. So I'm going to have to pause the video and we come back. Hopefully it will have worked. Anyway, and this is how you would transfer the file using a terminal console port, console cable, and X modem.